Welcome to the ACS Technical Advisory Board podcast series, where we talk all things tech including data, cyber, AI, blockchain, and Internet of Things. Meet your host, Dr. David Cook, Vice President of the Australian Computer Society's Technical Boards. David is a technology advocate dedicated to advances and progression of computing and human-computer interaction. In today's episode, David will be talking with Peter Runcy on the relationship and importance between IoT and smart cities, as well as the connection between IoTs, natural hazards and sustainability. This podcast looks at the emerging importance of IoTs and the impact and change on Australia. Today, I'm joined by Peter Runcy. He's the Vice Chair of the ACS Technical Committee on the Internet of Things. Peter has had roles with Data61 in terms of smart cities, energy, and supply chains. He's been an active lead on the New South Wales Smart Sensing Network and a member of the IOTAA Water Sector Working Group. He's a former Vice President of the Australian Smart Communities Association. And currently, he is an independent technology consultant working with government and industry. Welcome, Peter Runcy. Thank you. So today, let's start with the easy questions. What's so important about IOTs and smart cities? IOTs and smart cities. Well, Internet of Things and smart cities goes back some time, um, some number of years. And, and I think probably the genesis of this was um, the desire to be able to collect information from cities and to inform things like, uh, you know, optimising parking, for example. Uh, so the ability to collect information from the field and then make that available to some sort of automated system or decision support system uh, was where this came about. So with, without Internet of Things, uh, there really was no no information available about the current state of the environment in a city. So one of the emerging areas is natural hazards. What would you say about the importance of IOTs in that space? So natural hazards, uh, when we talk about natural hazards, we're talking, in Australia at least, we're talking about uh, heat, so increasing heat, urban heat is often a term used, uh, bushfires, floods, storms, cyclones, and sea level rise, typically, and landslides are typically the the types of natural hazards that we uh, that we are dealing with and having to face. Uh, that again, like smart cities, we need information from the field about what's actually going on to inform uh, responses, preparation, and uh, decision support around how do we how do we better plan and prepare for these sorts of these sorts of hazards. IoT is actually collecting information from the environment, so it's sensors and other types of devices in the field collecting information, as well as uh, devices which which are actuators, they're making some difference. They're, they're signage or they're they're uh, doing something in the field controlled from a remote system. So it's a two way thing. Predominantly, though, IoT is collecting information and then helping make decisions. The uh, the global community is very concerned about sustainability, and I wonder, from an Australian perspective, what's the connection or what are the important areas for sustainability in IoTs? Well, so um, sustainability is a big issue and, it, and it's been recognised in Australia that you know, sustainability, whether it's circular economy, which is being able to take outputs from a business uh, and then recycle them or effectively use them as inputs to another business, that's, that's circular, or net zero, or uh, being able to protect our environment. A lot of that is place-based. So you know, if you, if you think about a city or a precinct or a state or even a country, uh, the ability to understand how sustainable are we at the moment. So collecting information from the field about uh, about inputs and outputs or from a business or uh, water quality or air quality, environmental, you know, environmental measurements or emissions or uh, the ability to measure uh, waste, uh, waste going in and waste generation to power coming out of a facility. All of these things, are, um, they're part of sustainability and the role of IoT here is to collect information about what's actually going on. That data can then be used to do reporting. So how are we travelling against our targets for sustainability or, uh, or and or, I guess, to inform uh, and feed into modelling. So the ability to generate models and scenarios and then uh, use that information and those models to, uh, to inform policy going forward. So sustainability, again, place-based. Same as smart cities, same as resilience and, and natural hazards. It's all place-based and things that are place-based need data about those places. So there's a lot of commonality between the three there. So, so Peter, it's not a perfect world. Um, what are the things that aren't working or what are the things we really, we really need to work on in terms of what are the challenges for IOTs in Australia? Uh, yeah, there are quite a few challenges. And if we, if we start with smart cities, 
um, if you think about in Australia, we have three levels of government uh, and they've all got a role to play. Uh, at the coalface, however, is local government. So local government are people there, they understand the communities, they understand what sorts of needs there are in their communities, whether it's traffic congestion or whether it's health or whether it's uh, you know air quality or environmental air quality. They understand what's going on. But the issue that they've got with technology is that quite often um, they struggle to use that technology. And in Australia, we have something like 400 plus councils in this country, only a relatively small number of councils are very skilled at using these sorts of technologies. Uh, and so what we've seen over, over the last so many years is that many IoT projects and technology projects generally have been uh, technology driven. So someone in council has said, this is a good idea, let's install some technology and see how we can use it. Uh, the, the challenge there though, is it's not easy to see how that project will then translate to scale and make some sort of impact for the community. So local government is undergoing a, um, a phase now where it's trying to understand how do we shift from a technology-driven investment in IoT and other technologies to more of a business-driven. So understanding what are the business needs or the community needs, and then being able to, uh, to be able to understand or define the need, select the right technology, and then deploy that Often that's all quite new for councils. So um, there's a big challenge there in terms of um, uh, bringing most councils up to the same level of capability or the ability to procure solutions which are actually going to do the job for them. So that's, that's the first challenge. There's other challenges. So another challenge is uh, when you think about councils which are uh, installing this technology as pilots and small scales, uh, ultimately need to scale up. They need to plan to be able to expand from um, a single solution to multiple solutions that do the same thing. And so that what I'm saying there is that there's that they, they might have bought an IoT solution from a company uh, and they've built their solution around that the way that company operates, the way that sensor works or that IoT device works. But over time, they want to be able to procure from um, a number of different or from the market, so a number of different companies uh, and their procurements process needs to be able to accommodate more than one player. So um, there's an increasing demand now for interoperability uh, and the industry, the IoT industry needs to see that uh, and then start looking at how do we play together with others um, to help these councils and state government um, deploy solutions, understanding that they need to be a heterogeneous solution, so an interoperable solution from different companies. So. If we did have a perfect world and you could get anything you wanted, what would be the big wins you'd be trying to put into play for Australia? In the case of um, cities, and this also applies to natural hazards as well, um, it, rather than everyone competing um, over a, a relatively small pie, it'd be nice to sort of get the basics in place and government can play a role in that and ACS can actually play a role in that to say that, you know, there's um, a base level of information that's needed. Um, to help us understand our places, uh, whether it's from a, a city's point of view, sustainability or resilience or nat natural hazards. Uh, so common data standards, um, the ability to provide sensing almost as a utility or, or IoT almost as a utility to say that there's some basic data infrastructure which involves collecting information from a range of different products, IoT products, making that data um, available, uh, communicating it back to um, a common data infrastructure, it doesn't have to be centralised, but it has to be common. Um, it could be federated or harmonised so that we know that if we're collecting information about sustainability, then um, we do that in a way that allows governments to cooperate with each other because they've got similar data available. Uh, and it means businesses can also participate in providing solutions around this common base functionality, um, IoT utility, let's call it. Peter Unsey, thanks for your time today. Okay, great. Thanks, David. To find out more about how the ACS is powering Australia's technology brilliance, visit us at our website, Facebook or LinkedIn. Want to get involved with the ACS technical boards? Email us at tab at acs.org.au and tell us a bit about yourself. Join us for more thought leadership, ideas and information through our other podcasts on the ACS YouTube, Facebook or on LinkedIn.